One day, Adam Savage was at the Colorado School of Mines, a public research university. At the time, Savage was in the midst of creating a new show, Savage Builds, which focuses on extreme engineering. The staff at the university told Savage all about their massive 3D printers that could print objects out of titanium. Immediately, Savage was very interested. The staff then said if he ever wants to print something weird, he could just let them know. At that moment, there was only one design in Savage's mind that he wanted to spring to life, a real-life Iron Man suit that can fly. Craig Bryce, the professor of practice in mechanical engineering at Colorado, Colorado instantly agreed to take part in this ambitious yet intriguing project. For those that don't know, Adam Savage is a special effects designer and creator. He worked on the TV series Mythbusters as a co-host from 2003 to 2017. He was also involved in the short-lived science reality game show Unchained Reaction. On top of his reality shows, Savage also made waves in the film and TV industry behind the scenes. He worked as a model maker or in the visual effects department on a number of productions, including Flubber, Galaxy Quest, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, Matrix Reloaded, Matrix Revolution, and many more. Also, fun fact, he got his start in the industry when he voiced Heathcliff in Sesame Street back in 1978 to 1980. Let's take a look at how this amazing feat was achieved. Savage and the team at the School of Mines teamed up with EOS. They're a 3D printing company that works with metal, as well as plastic. The team took the design idea from the MCU, in particular with the Mark II suit as seen in the first Iron Man film during 2008. The overall design was then converted into smaller pieces that could be created via a 3D metal printer. Those newer, smaller blueprints were then sent to EOS, who were in charge of printing the pieces. The pieces not only had to be made out of metal, but also thin enough to keep the weight of the armor at the minimum. Besides from the metal parts of the suit, there is also fabric to put the whole armor together and add maneuverability. Otherwise, it would be like wearing a heavy medieval suit of armor, which isn't easy to fly, we imagine. The suit also uses urethane, fiberglass, and nylon to add more flexibility. The knee and elbow areas of the suit use hinges to allow the wearer to walk more freely. The suit is held together with a webbing of buckles. Altogether, the suit is made from over 280 different parts to form the overall Iron Man suit. And that's not taking into account the pieces involved in the jetpack. Since we mentioned jetpack, that's one of the main features involved in this Iron Man suit since Savage wanted it to fly. However, it's not built into the suit. The jetpack is known as the Jet Suit and is made by the company Gravity. It's a group founded by Richard Browning. He recently appears in news outlets around the globe involving his famed Jet Suit. Recently, along with the UK's Great North Air Ambulance Service, Browning tested the Jet Suit to aid paramedics to get to people in remote locations. For example, in a situation where it would take the paramedics 25 minutes to reach an injured party, it only took Browning 90 seconds in the suit to reach the person. The jet suit has five turbines. Two are connected to each arm, and the other is attached on the back of the person. These turbines fire out power of 1,050 brake horsepower. In 2018, a limited number of jet suits were planned to be sold at Selfridges in London. Getting your mitts on one of these would have set you back $443,000. Not only did they want to fly, Savage wanted the suit to be able to take bullet damage with ease. After all, the Iron Man suit is meant to be armor. The suit was tested against weapon fire, and besides from some aesthetic damage, the suit was able to deflect the bullet rather than allow it to pass through the armor. Handy for crime fighting. In order to create the metal pieces in the Iron Man suit, EOS's 3D printer uses a laser beam to melt a fine metal powder. The powder is firstly spread across the build platform of the printer. The laser then melts the powder in a particular fashion according to the specifications added in. The printer then slowly builds up the powder by each layer, eventually ending with the completed part. The smallest 3D metal printer that EOS produces is the M100. Its base cost, with no added features, comes to $350,000. This printer is often used for creating small parts, especially those items required in the medical field. For a more industrial-sized metal printer, there's the desktop metal production printer. This large beast will set you back $750,000. In order to get ready to take flight with the jetpack, Savage underwent days of specialized training with Browning. He was attached to a rope just in case anything went wrong. Browning has stated that those that have experience in spatial awareness, such as those trained in gymnastics or a similar transferable skill, will quickly pick up how to use the jet suit. In the end, Savage was unable to master the device in a safe enough fashion. So, Browning was strapped into the Tony Stark-inspired armor. Once Browning was inside the suit, he stated it felt like he was in a 
massive wetsuit, but he loved the design. However, he struggled to walk. The shin protection was bowed in a banana shape that made it very hard to move and was generally uncomfortable. Browning also couldn't see anything through the eye holes on the mask. Essentially, he had to fly blind. Iron Man Browning managed to take off and hover for a while, as well as safely landing. However, he stated that the landing was painful due to the lack of movement in the knee pieces, so he was unable to bend his knees on landing. Plus, the bowed shin armor made his legs touch the ground at an unnatural angle. If you saw the footage of the Iron Man suit and thought, well, I need one of those, then we have the sources for you. However, these suits can't fly just yet. The company, Killer Body, specializes in creating remote control cars. However, they've dabbled in creating suits seen in superhero films. One such dabble has involved the Iron Man suit. Coming in at just under $4,000, the suit is a full wearable replica of the Mark 7 in Tony Stark's arsenal. There are lights that simulate the arc reactor and repulsor rays on the suit's palms. One of the biggest selling points is the wearable helmet. It alone costs nearly $280, but it's voice controlled. You get to speak to Jarvis, sort of. You can ask Jarvis to open and close the helmet, as well as turn on and off the eye lights. But if a replica won't do it, you could create your own Iron Man suit, as long as you have a lot of money, that is and if the technology actually existed. But for now, we'll only worry about the fees involved. Back in 2013, Money Supermarket put together how much it would cost to create an Iron Man MCU armor, as well as the price of Tony Stark's high life. For his whole life, they stated it would cost a little over $10 billion. But since Savage was creating the Mark II, Money Supermarket also examined how much that suit would cost to build. It alone came to $80 million. The cost of all Stark suits up to Iron Man 3 was $7 billion. We guess we'll stick to imagining being Iron Man rather than spend quite that much.